The final stretch of Summer Showdown qualifiers are right ahead of us, and the answer to the playoff equation has yet to be solved. Right now, the picture feels rather simple, but if one little thing changes, things aren't necessarily so cut and dry. Things could get really complicated and pretty nasty super quickly, and there's been a lot of questions about how the playoffs and plans are going to work this year, and what the scenarios are looking like, plus a bunch of you fans out there are probably looking for some big time copium, and if that's what you're after, then you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll be doing an in-depth analysis and guide on the Overwatch League play-in slash playoff picture for both the West and the Eastern conferences. We'll go over all the different possibilities so you know exactly what your team needs to do to make the big dance. And we're going to start out West as things are a bit more complicated over there. There's a lot more scenarios that could play out since there's a bunch of teams still in the running. So let's do a quick break breakdown of how that's looking. Here's a breakdown of what the standings look like here on August 15th, 2023. So Atlanta Reign are currently locked into a top three spot in the Overwatch League standings, which means that they are guaranteed to make it to the playoffs in Toronto later this year. There's still a possibility that they might end up being the two or the three seed, let's say, depending on how these other teams do at the top, but they are already guaranteed to have a spot there and they have nothing to worry about. Outside of them, seeds two through five, all at bare minimum, will be participating in the play-in tournament with Florida. Florida, Houston, and Boston all having an opportunity to potentially move into a top three guaranteed spot. Florida Mayhem in all likelihood are going to get that two seed or quite possibly the one seed if the rain end up struggling. You never know what might happen with a new meta, with a new hero and everything. There's a chance they could end up taking a little bit. But bare minimum, it's looking like Florida Mayhem will probably lock up a top three spot. They'd have to collapse and lose both of their games. Otherwise, they're probably chilling. Honestly, if you're a Mayhem fan, the prospect of surpassing the Atlanta Reign is a bit more interesting compared to the possibility of somehow missing a top three spot. The Reign are right there. They're within striking distance. If Mayhem end up having a better week with map differential or they possibly just go 2-0 and then Rain lose one of their games, then Mayhem could move into the number one seed in the entire league. Where things maybe feel a bit tighter is with the Outlaws and the Uprising. Houston currently possess the three seed at 11 and three with a slightly better map differential than Boston. But the key takeaway that makes you feel like Houston are probably going to lock up that other spot is the fact that they play Vegas and the London Spitfire, two teams that you'd largely expect them to defeat even with a meta shift. Technically speaking, Houston still could move into the two spot or possibly even one but at that point, they're asking for some big time favors from these other teams potentially choking. Atlanta literally would have to lose both of their games as their map differential is just way too high for Houston to surpass. And even with Florida, I don't really know how the tiebreakers would work there. Houston, even if they played perfectly and Florida, let's say, got 3-0'd by Boston and then 3-2'd the Valiant, they'd be left with the same exact map differential at that point. And I'm not really sure how the tiebreaker would go in that scenario. So really, Houston, if they want the best chance, they need Florida or Atlanta to fall off a cliff. And that's probably not going to happen. So they're basically playing for that three spot and just hoping that Boston cannot get by them. And again, Houston are in really good shape. They just need to win one game to close the deal, and they play Vegas in London. That is very doable for them. And looking at it from the side of Boston, their schedule is a lot more difficult because they do play the Mayhem, and while they haven't been playing that great lately, they'll be playing a very desperate Gladiators team as well. So Boston have it much tougher, and things are looking pretty grim for them to get that final playoff spot. So they're probably going to be moving into that top seed for the play-ins, unless a miracle happens. Boston just need to make sure, at the very least, that they can accomplish that top seed in the Western play-ins if playoffs are no longer an option for them. Because technically, the Titans could surpass them in this scenario. Titans have the tiebreaker since they beat them in the head-to-head, -head, and... The Titans map differential is right there. 
they're very close. If Boston do not have a good week, the Titans could very much move ahead of them and make Boston's lives just that much more difficult. Thinking about the Titans themselves, they're sitting in a really good spot. The only team that could possibly surpass them would be the San Francisco Shock, and they just get booted down one spot at the very worst, but that would require the Titans to lose both of their games and for the Shock to win both of their games. But yeah, Titans are good. They're sitting at one of the play-in spots. Where things get a bit more interesting is everybody else in the middle of the pack. None of these guys are even guaranteed to make the playoffs right now. But let me preface this by saying that all of this depends on the LA Gladiators. If they don't make any kind of noise, then none of it matters, and the other teams that you see currently in the top 10 are going to the play-ins no matter what. This entire play-in picture in terms of who is sitting from home with Vegas and Valiant all depends on the Gladiators. The Gladiators currently sit on the outside looking in, at 11th place with a 5-9 and nine record and a minus 12 map differential. Their poor execution over the entire summer stage has booted them from one of the best teams in the West to one of the worst, and now they find themselves one win behind all of those guys in the middle, as well as two behind the Shock. And unfortunately, because of the hole they've dug for themselves, the only way the Gladiators could make the playoffs this point is if they win both of their games. And that's only step number one. They don't control their own destiny. Even if they go undefeated and they go 7-9, and nine, there's still a strong possibility that it's far too late. That awful map differential is really playing to their disadvantage. At minus 12, they pretty much have to play flawlessly. Ideally, they need to go 6-0 and oh with their maps in the next two games to get that sucker back down to minus 6. Anything higher and you're kind of playing with fire. So you want to get down to minus six and then hope that one of these other teams gets blown out in one of their losses and then they just barely win in their victory. Like with London, let's say. They would need to get absolutely rolled by the Outlaws. I'm talking a 3-0 L and then they'd need to 3-2 the Valiant. At that point, their map differential would be a minus seven and that would allow for the Gladiators to jump ahead of them. And I believe the only other team they could jump ahead of just based off of map differential alone would be Toronto defiant. If Toronto end up having the same exact scenario play out like I said with Spitfire, they'd end up with a minus six map differential, and Gladiators, because they have the tiebreaker, would be able to jump ahead of them and knock them out. Either that, or simply have one of them lose both of their games, and then you win both, and then you're good. Don't even have to worry about the tiebreaker. As for Shock, NYXL, and the Justice, the Gladiators can't get by any of them just based off of record tiebreaker alone. So with Shock, Justice, in the NYXL, they need them to lose both of their games. And for some of these guys, again, it's pretty doable. Justice and NYXL definitely could have a winless week. Honestly, New York are probably the key with all of this. This Defiant and London stuff that I'm talking about is all based off of luck and numbers, but with New York, because they're on their schedule, that's half the battle right there. If you beat them, you're taking out two birds with one stone. You get one of your wins, and you get one of New York's losses simultaneously. From there, you just have to hope that NYXL lose to Vancouver, which is possible, but then you somehow, someway, have to overcome the monster that is Boston. New York, I guess, gives you the best possible way of controlling your destiny, at least to a certain extent. All these other teams, you're kind of just hoping for certain score lines to be going up, or for one of them to just lose both their games altogether, but with New York, at least you can kind of help control that by beating them one time, that's going to be your best possible path, Gladiators fans. You got to go all in on NYXL and pray for their downfall. So yeah, Gladiators fans, there's a lot of teams that could flop and give you a possible path, but you need things to be absolutely perfect. Anyway, let's take a look back towards the top again and talk about the six seed San Francisco Shock. And they have a big time leg up over seed seven through 10 as they have an extra win over them. And despite having a minus five map differential, everybody else's is literally about the same. So it really doesn't make that much of a difference so long as the Shock take care of business. And for any Shock fans maybe worried about missing play-ins altogether, you're in a pretty good situation because you're at that seven win mark. 
A lot of these other teams could very well go winless, and if Gladiators even lose one time, then you're safe. There's really nothing to worry about. And in the result that you go winless, your map differential still might be better than one of these other teams, so Shock would probably need to have a monumental choke to let this go. Ideally, if you're playing for seeding though, if you're the Shock, you want to at least be competitive against Atlanta Rain. Even if you 3-0 Vegas, I think that not doing well against Atlanta could really screw you over. You want to try and steal a map there if you're the Shock. If you can get up to a minus 4 map differential and be 8-8, eight and eight, it wouldn't be too bad. The only problem is that if Toronto, let's say, go 2-0, they're also at minus 4 right now, they're going to move above the Shock right away. The team with the biggest threat of pulling this off and going 2-0, at least in my opinion, is probably Defiant. NYXL are up there as well, Gladiators and Titans, but I'd say that Defiant playing Washington and Vancouver have the best possible chance of moving up to that 5 spot and kicking the Shock out. So I'd hate to say it, Shock fans, but I don't know how long that 6 seed is going to last unless you somehow end up upsetting the Atlanta Reign. Now for the 7 through 10 seed. They're all in this together. They all have six wins, and their map differentials are separated by only two at most. Honestly, what they mostly come down to is how well some of them play against each other, and who ends up playing slightly better than everybody else. It's really just a matter of numbers here, and how well you're doing in the losses and the wins respectively. What you're looking for is blowout wins or close losses. That's going to basically decide how that order goes from 7 through 10, if the shock manage to hang on and nothing too complicated happens. Now, if the shock were to choke, that could open things up big time. I mean, seed seven through 10 could all literally jump up to number six. It's super doable, even for the London Spitfire but that's basically a numbers game, so let's not complicate things too much. Looking at who all these teams face, London Spitfire have a, hopefully, gimme matchup for them against the LA Valiant. If they can win that one and play super well, that might open things up for them to get ahead of one of these other teams who could possibly lose both of their games. Now, if London were to choke against Valiant, they're probably looking at an 0-2 because Houston are really, really good. You don't expect them to win that one. But if they at least beat Valiant, some of these other guys have way higher chances of going 0-2 just because they're playing multiple tough games. The Justice, I mean, they play Toronto and Atlanta. They could easily lose both of those. New York, while well, I think there's a chance they could win both their games, could also very much lose to Gladiators and the Titans, two tough opponents. The Defiant, they play Vancouver and Washington. They can lose both of those games. Why couldn't they? They went to five maps with both of them. It all depends on that Valiant game. I mean, if they do damage against Houston, great. But you're looking towards that one. The one that you know for a fact they can win. If they win that one... This entire thing opens up, I promise you. The likelihood of all of those teams I mentioned all splitting, all getting one win apiece is not very likely. If I was a betting man, I'd probably count on Justice or NYXL missing out and going down to that 10 spot. Those feel like the most likely suspects. The fact that so many of these middle of the pack teams are playing each other literally in the last weeks is absolutely insane, and every single map could end up mattering to decide that final order, and who ends up missing the cut altogether if gladiators make things complicated. And that's kind of where we sit from top to bottom. There's a lot of stuff that isn't guaranteed right now, there's going to be a lot of moving pieces over these next couple of weeks, so pay close attention to the standings and how that order ends up going, as that could literally decide everything. The entire fate of the league championship could be on the line. Speaking of fates, let's move over to the Eastern Conference, where things just aren't the same. The format this year over there is a lot weirder, and in a way a bit more complicated, so listen up. So in the East, your record in terms of like win-loss has nothing to do with your ability to make the play-ins or the playoffs for that matter. The only thing that matters in the East is how you do in the knockouts, that being the spring stage knockouts plus the summer stage knockouts. Three teams from the East are going to the playoffs this year, two of which will have guaranteed spots without having to go through the play-ins, but in order to decide who those top two teams are, they need to calculate the average placement of how you did between the spring 
and summer stages combined. So just to give you an example of this so you get a better understanding, if the playoffs were to start today, the Hangzhou Spark and the Seoul Infernal would be the two teams that automatically make the playoffs because they both finished first place in their respective brackets. And if those guys were to do that again, if they both get first, then there is no need to decide anything. They'll have an average placement of first through both events, so they're good. They're locking up their tickets to Toronto. However, if either of them were to play very poorly, then that opens up an opportunity both for the Dallas Fuel and Dreamers, who currently sit at three and four respectively in the standings when it comes to average placement. Both of them got second place in their respective knockout brackets, so if they play really good and one of those guys do really badly, all of a sudden, there's a chance we could see a contenders team or the Dallas Fuel make it to the playoffs right away. Oh, and just to complicate things further, if you're a contenders team, okay, well, basically Dreamers, they're the only ones that have a real chance, but if you're Dreamers, the only way that you could make the Overwatch League playoffs is if you make it through these knockouts and you have a good enough average placement ahead of either Soul or the Spark. Because guess what? Contenders teams are not allowed to play in the Eastern play-in tournament. It's either have the good average placement or nothing. In the event that Dreamers were to make it in over either the Spark or the Infernal, then things would get really weird. Dreamers would be going to the playoffs first off, which would be insane. But second off, then we'd have five Overwatch League teams playing in a play-in tournament. The most likely scenario, though, would be that Spark and Infernal make it in, meaning that we'll have the Dynasty, Dallas Fuel, Guangzhou Charge, and Shanghai Dragons competing in a four-man double elimination bracket with only one playoff spot up for grabs. So yeah, like I was saying, things are a lot weirder in the East. It's a bit harder to calculate and give you guys scenarios just because the numbers are a lot harder to line up and understand with averages and whatnot. We don't know how these teams are going to place. I mean, I'm sure some mathematicians can probably figure this stuff out. But really, it's all about one of the top teams doing badly if you want to see any sort of upset open up. Otherwise, you'll probably be left with the standard scenario that we're all kind of expecting. It's a lot easier to make out the West and what can happen. The East is all going to depend on like the next week or so with play-ins. That's how everything's going to be decided. It's not going to be nearly as drawn out compared to the West. So if you're an East fan, then you better buckle in because things are about to get crazy. Some of these teams' playoff lives could be on the line in a new meta in a do-or-die tournament. Like, what else could you ask for? That's an entertainment. It's time to see who controls their own destiny. Let me know what you think about the West and East playoff scenarios down in the comments below. And if you found this guide and overall analysis helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more Overwatch League content every single week. I've been ATP, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.